Hi, welcome to Supper with Stella. Today we are going to be making a chicken tarragon. So we're gonna be doing a very kind of classic version of this dish with bone and skin on, uh, chicken thighs, uh, just sauteing them up, and then making a really nice cream sauce with, of all things, of course, tarragon. And I decided to make this dish because for the first time this year, I have something, it's, it's, uh, it's April. And so for the first time this year, I actually have something in my garden that is ready to come out and get used. So I'm, I'm actually getting to kind of let my garden dictate what I'm cooking. Uh, and my tarragon, I planted it for the first time last year. And this is, it, it did all right last year, but this is the first time that the plant came back like really vigorous and really healthy. So I needed to trim the top off to keep it that way and said, well, chicken tarragon it is. So I'm just gonna start off, I've got a little olive oil in the pan, and I'm just gonna start by just thinly slicing up this shallot. And you could use a small onion, like a small red onion instead of shallot. I don't wanna have too much, whoop, Need to turn my heat on. Uh, I don't want to have too much onion flavor, is what I was saying, just a little bit. Uh, tarragon is a pretty powerful flavor, so you want to have some other flavors such as shallot. I'm going to use some garlic as well, but really want the flavor of the tarragon to really shine through. And this is Traditionally, it's more of a rustic dish using, as I am today, uh, bone and skin on chicken. And I'm just using three chicken leg quarters. My recipe is going to reflect four, um, but I bought a pack of 10. It was on sale and when I divided it up, I can only have one meal with four. So I decided this is one where we'll just do one meal with this one and split that third chicken thigh between the two of us. Not quite enough for leftovers. But using, again, bone and skin on chicken, there's a lot of recipes online uh, that call for, and I'm just this shallot, or garlic, I'm gonna thinly slice the garlic. But a lot of recipes online use chicken breasts, like whole chicken breasts. And to me, those are just, I don't really like sauteing them up like this um, because generally they're going to, by the time the center, hits 165 and the chicken is safe to, to eat, fully cooked and safe to eat, uh, generally your exterior is just gonna be, especially on a white meat chicken like that, and something as thick as a chicken breast, your exterior is just gonna be too dried out. Uh, so I definitely wasn't interested in doing that way. Um, another really popular way I saw online was using boneless, skinless chicken thighs, which is certainly something I thought about doing as well. Um, it would be a little less time than this, but I've done a lot of like shredded chicken lately and I kind of was just craving some, uh, some chicken skin, <laughs> some nice crispy chicken skin. Uh, so uh, that, you know, that was ultimately, I think my, my bone in skin on thigh decision. Um, but you could also, and I've done a lot of recipes like this, treat it more like, um, like a chicken, Piccata, can't think, couldn't think of the name, where you take the chicken breast and you slice it across in half, pound them thin, flour them, fry them up in butter and oil, and then make your tarragon sauce in the very similar manner to, a, to, to how you would make chicken piccata, which I, I have a recipe for that um, on my site, and I believe I did a video of it as well. So I almost did it that way, but then decided I really wanted some chicken skin. All right, so got my oil heating, and I want to get, as always, want to get my chicken in it. Need to salt and pepper it, of course. Uh, chicken in, skin side down. This is going to render the fat so that we get a nice, good chicken flavor throughout the dish. But with this, since we are gonna be eating the chicken skin, I really want this to have a nice, really want this to have a nice golden brown, really crispy skin to it. 
So if I'm doing this application, but making like a soup that's got pulled chicken in it, I'm just rendering fat. I don't really care about what the color of the skin looks like. Cause when you do pulled chicken or shredded chicken, you're not really, you're not using the skin. We are using the skin here. So I want nice crispy brown skin with it. So I am just going to get these seared up, salt and pepper the back of them, get both sides good and seared up, get the fat rendered, make sure the skin is a nice crispy golden brown. Uh, and then I'll meet you back here in a minute. All right, so we're back and my chicken thighs have gotten seared on both sides. I've got a really nice crispy skin on the outside. So you can kind of see the good crispy skin. Um, I'm just gonna set those aside. They're going to go back into the sauce, so it's okay that I used the same plate. That's fine. It's, it's, the chicken's not ready, not cooked through yet. So I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna turn my heat down a little and then get this shallot in. And as soon as this shallot softens up, I will get my garlic in and then we'll start building our tarragon sauce. Whenever you add something to the pan that's got fat in it, make sure you give it a good toss. Like whenever you're adding a vegetable, you know, into fat like this, make sure you give it a really good toss and that way everything gets coated in the fat so it all cooks a little more quickly. We'll give that, this pan's pretty warm, so it's really going pretty quickly, even though I've turned the heat down. It's not gas, so it registers heat a little, little differently. Okay, it looks like it's slowed down some. So I'll give that a few minutes, let it brown up, and then we'll get our garlic thrown in. Okay, so my onion is soft, or my shallot is softened and beginning to brown. So I'm just gonna get the garlic in. Get it tossed in that fat. I'm gonna go ahead, and start chopping up my tarragon. And tarragon is a fairly strong herb. It's got somewhat of a licorice -y flavor. So if it is an herb that you are not familiar with working with, you might want to go easy on it. Um, it's just, uh, it, it can be a lot. A lot of people don't care for it because of the licorice flavor. Now I like it, I don't care for licorice, um, but it's definitely something that I like to have. Um, not all the time, it's not an herb that I use that frequently, but it's something I like to have every now and then. So. Just kind of keep that in mind if you've never used tarragon before, that it is a fairly bold flavor. Go ahead and add a couple tablespoons of butter and a little flour, about two tablespoons. And I'm using Wondra as always. You can use all purpose though. This is just going to give our sauce some thickness. all that mixed around. And just give it a few, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. Just give it a little minute to cook, just so that that flour cooks. We're not, we're not making a roux. We're not really looking for any kind of color or anything like that. We just want, uh, just want to make sure that the flour has been cooked through, which I'm, I'm honestly just waiting for my pat of butter to melt. So now I've got a little bit of white wine. I use some of my frozen uh, wine cubes uh, and I'm just gonna splash it in just to deglaze. Got a lot on the bottom. Using the bone in skin on chicken and it's coming right up because of the wine, but it creates a lot um, a great flavor that sticks to the bottom of the pan. So I am cleaning my pan, but most importantly, I'm picking up that flavor so that that flavor is in my sauce. 
There's probably a better tool to use than these tongs, but I've got them out and they're dirty, so why not? Okay, so once the wine cooks off, meaning once I no longer smell alcohol, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some liquids in, uh, which is really what's going to create the sauce. So I'm gonna use about a cup of chicken stock, and then I'm gonna use some cream as well. And I'm just gonna eyeball it, but it's gonna be about a cup of stock and then roughly half a cup to maybe three quarters of a cup of cream. Okay, I no longer smell alcohol, so I'm gonna go ahead and add just half of this in. And I will just stick this in the fridge and save this other half for later. I will just go ahead and get my cream in. Like I said, roughly half a cup, really just kind of waiting for it to get to the color I want, right? If you're ever cooking, making a sauce like this, that's rustic, casual, you know, you just wait till the sauce turns the color you're looking for, right? If you've cooked with it before, if you've made dishes like this before, you know what it's supposed to look like. So while this is beginning to come, I want this to come up to not like a hard boil, but I wanna start seeing a little bit of a rolling boil in it. Uh, then I will cut the temperature down. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get my tarragon in. And I'm going to garnish with tarragon. So I, I don't wanna use all of it up. And I mean, this would be way too much tarragon anyway. As I said, it's a stronger herb. So get my tarragon in, get some salt and pepper in. Oh wow, it's already actually come up to a little bit of a roll. I didn't think it happened so fast. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. I'm gonna get my chicken thighs, whoop, which of course they're uncooked, right? So they need to cook still. So nestle them down in the sauce. Get all those juices. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this back to my stove. Uh, the chicken will continue cooking until it is cooked through. The sauce will be cooked through at that point too, right? You would need your sauce and your chicken to come to 165 to be safe. Once the internal temperature of the chicken, once the internal temperature of the chicken is 165 degrees, your sauce will be far above that, okay? But just for safety reasons, your sauce also needs to hit that, but it's going to take a lot longer for the chicken to hit that. so. Just kind of something to keep in mind. Um, but I'm gonna put this back on the eye behind me uh, on my real stove so it can really cook instead of a little heating plate uh, and just let it cook till the chicken is done and then it is ready to go. So we're gonna have this later tonight for dinner. So probably what I'll do is let this cook, let the sauce thicken a little and then pop it in the refrigerator and heat it back up later tonight, making sure that that chicken comes to 165 degrees. Um, but that's it, that is chicken tarragon, bone and skin on, takes a little while to cook because it's bone and skin on, but it is uh, a lot of hands off time and a lot of just the stove doing the work. So thank you so much for joining me and I will snap a picture uh, when we're finished, bye.